Pleased to have you as a guest like this. Thank you. How did it all start? Had music always been a part of your life from when you were a little boy? Yeah, you know, growing up musical family, grandfather, mother, uncle, sister, Pete, everything. <laughs> <laughs> what part of Jamaica? Um, St. Town, you know. Yeah? That's in the country. What town? Uh, a town called Rodnall. It's not well known, you know. It's a little place up in the hills, you know. Yeah. Um, how big is your family? Well, my family is really a big family, you know. Malcolm, the family name is Malcolm. It's plenty. That's a good name. Yeah. <laughs> when did you begin to get involved in music, really? Well, 19... Well, 19... Call about 1958. Doing what? Well, we were always interested in music, but that time I was learning trade, you know, and meet up some guys who can sing. One mm -hmm. named Desmond Decker. And so we started out from a rehearse together and thing, you know. And then one day we went away, do some recording, then I fell after. Mm -hmm. You weren't doing the same kind of things then that you're doing now. What kind of music was it in the beginning? Uh, that music was ska. Ska, ska music. Yeah. Well, how does ska different fr from reggae? Ska is different, different in sound, different in style, different playing, you know. Mm -hmm. Ska is a more quicker music mm -hmm. than reggae. No relation? Yeah, it's almost the same music breakdown to go much slower, you know? Uh -huh. Same root? Yeah. Uh -huh. It's almost the same music, yeah. But I only say now, if it was playing at, um, at 33, that play at seven and a half, you know? I hear it more. That's a good analogy. Uh, how, how does reggae and ska come out of Calypso? Many people ask that. Yeah, huh? because the Calypso was always there first, right. you know? And then now, uh, when the musicians in Jamaica started to play, a lot of them can play Calypso too, because they play a lot of Calypso. Mm -hmm. But because uh, the American influence music come past you down there, you know, them start to kind of get more to, them time you saw Fats Domino, yeah. and plenty of them type of people. So after a while now, the music start to drift from the reggae. To, it used to be a, a music almost like a, like a half blues. And used to play before mm. the scare start, you know. Even people like Joe X, cha na na cha na 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 cha na na cha na 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 You know that music? Right. Used to play that plenty. Uh -huh. So um, from there now it developed to people start ching, 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 for ska, you know. Right. And then for um, rock studies like jeng, jeng, jeng. For reggae you now it's jeng, it jeng, it jeng, you know. They have three different feel. But the three of them can put together again and make one thing still. Now, Calypso music, most of it dealt with family and folk stories and love and beautiful island in the sun, things yeah. like that. How did it move into what we're getting in the music now where we have message? Because during that time of this um, Calypso and um, thing, people never wasn't so conscious about Africa and where them roots come from. Mm. Since the reggae come now, people get, I mean, not from a point of music, because music is always conscious. But since the reggae come now, the reggae start talk about Africa, blackness, you know, in a militant way. So that is how it kind of, that is how the lyrics differ from the whole island in the sun. Well, who are some of your influences? Well, I think my biggest influence is Marcus Garvey, I'll say. Yeah. Sure. From uh, what you heard, coming up as a boy about Garvey or what you've learned now that you're grown or what? Um, what to hear, what to read, you know, and what to, what to know, know about him. Did you learn much about Garvey in school? No, no. Nah, nah. yeah. They don't teach. It's the education that we don't get in school, you know. We don't get that type of education that when we grow up we can know who we is. Mm -hmm. We get a more education that we might know who Christopher Columbus is, how Marco Polo is, you know. But we never really know who Marcus Garvey is, who Elis Selassie is, or who any black man is. Were you born as a Rasta, or wh how did that evolve? Well, where I figure now, I was born, you know, and when born and uh, growing, there was a certain amount of consciousness in you know, myself that, you know, it was always a lonely world, not finding people who might think like me, you know. Yeah. Not, 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 not to say that I think so different, but because and this consciousness about God and the people we come from is more Christian, you know. We always try to do, like, try to stand up not right. But what we used to find out now that one church quarreling against the next church, and I figure I never want any of that, you know. 
I never want to really entertain anything where this one a fight against that one and everybody talking about God still. So after going on and going on and coming up, you know, the, the, the thing that was there get more stronger, come to Kingston, meet some more people, them people is Rasta. You talk to them and find out it's the same thing I have inside. It's the same thing. How old were you when this started to happen? This is about... 17, 18, you know. Uh-huh. I find out that the same thing where I deal with, the same thing where the Rasta man talk about. So that is how I could identify myself as a Rasta by no. not changing, you know. Now what happened when you went back home and told your, your family what you had found? Oh, I never have a home to go back to. No? No. Where we from, everybody gone, you know. Uh-huh. Everybody gone. Everybody living in America, some living in Kingston, everybody gone. So never really have a home not that much, although we used to have a home before grandfather died, you know. But after grandfather died, everything gets crashed. So, I know so you go. came to Kingston and that's where it began to happen? Yeah. Where did you live in Kingston? What part? Um, east. I'll call it East Kingston. Mm-hmm. Out near the east. Yeah. And then we go up, up a place in Oxford Street, you know, down to Spanish Stone Road, down to Trent, then up to Trenchtown. Yes. So for a long time, things were kind of lean. Well, yes, things was kind of lean as can. It lived to what is your expectation and your do, you know. To me, it was it was lean, but I could understand it because coming from a country where you learn to do things like you don't learn to depend on family and all of that, you know. You go out and you plant your own corn and you watch the corn grow. When corn grow, you pick your own corn, you know what I mean? Yes. All of them fruits from them tree, you can get them, you know? So... It's a little different, though, in town. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you got to do different things to eat, eh? <laughs> well, when you're in a city, it's a whole different ball game, you know? Right. People have to go to work, catch the bus. You know, the country all the day, you go for the donkey, and you ride the donkey to the farm, and you're cool, you know? Right. In other city, people who also catch the bus, go to work, get off of work, come back home, <laughs> you know? So it was a different thing up there. I know a little bit about Jamaica, and I understand in Kingston, Trenchtown is a rough part of town. How did you survive? Well, while living in Trenchtown, you know, um, as a young man, surviving was easy. The only thing you'd have to really look out for was the police, you know? Because the police could have just get you, frame you. You go to prison, and because you come from Trenchtown, you know, Trenchtown, from them say, where you from? It's a Trenchtown. You're gone, you know? <laughs> you get shipped out. You know, a lot of people are confused about what a Rasta really is and have a very negative image of the Rasta. Tell us what a Rasta is. See, Christ promised that he will return within 2,000 years, you know? Mm. And he said, when he come, he will be the king of kings, the lord of lords, the conquering the line of Judah through the lineage of King Solomon and King David. Now, my life has great meaning to me. So I really search to find out if God is here. When I search, I look, I look in Ethiopia. I look all about, look in Germany, you know, because I'm not prejudiced. I look for God. I look in Ethiopia, I see one man stand up with these name, Emperor I see last year. Name King of Kings, Lord of Lord, conquering land of Judah, through the lineage of King Solomon and King David, written in the Bible. Now, one of my things is that um, the Bible, them say that King James edit the Bible. Now, my understanding is that if King James edit the Bible, I don't think he will edit it for the benefit of black people. So when the revelation turned out that Isla Selassie is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lord, coming straight through the lineage of King Solomon and King David, then you know, we really know that this is a Christ return. Because we know in this world, yeah, when the white man, when the white man edited it, he wouldn't edit it in our behalf. You know, he would have more edited to make it look like England going to be the, the big, big thing. But in the last days, they'll prove out that is the is Ethiopia, Isla Selassie, you know. And Isla Selassie's name is Rasta. So we are called Rasta, you know, called by his name. Uh-huh. And then, we, it's a lot of things. We go as far as saying, him say, when I return and you call upon him, now this is God, him say, when I return and you call upon him, your mother and your father will forsake you. Now, we know that if you call upon the Catholics, you, you, they embrace you. If you call upon the Church of God, they embrace you. Any religion you call upon, you might get embraced. The only religion they push you off from is, is Rasta. But that just make the truth more, more real, because him say, when you call upon my name, your mother and your father will forsake you. And that is why today you hear Rasta get so much bad name. It's not because 
Rasta do anything bad. But it's because all the prophecy go with it. When you, if, if your mother and your father will forsake you, just imagine people who don't even know you. You know what I mean? Well, in most religions, uh, you go to church on Sunday, and you may go to a Bible class once or twice during the week, True. and that's it. Yeah. Is it pretty much basically the same in Rasta, or is it more involved? No, when we say no, we say that the man is a church. Uh, the Bible is there. But what we find out now is that a lot of people read the Bible, but they don't understand the Bible because the approach to the Bible is wrong. I mean, there's no way you can read a book. You just take up a book and just read it in the middle and figure you can find out what was happening from the beginning to the middle. The, the, the Bible is a whole book with a, with a whole tradition in it. And from them read to Genesis to Revelation, the whole truth and the whole straight road with the overstanding is there. You know, so it's not a several then. We just go um, go church and do like the other Christian. We know that the man is a church, you know? Because, you see, you just can't overthrow the truth, you know? We, our people, have our roots. When we search for it, we find it in a Rasta because we don't see there's no other way. We don't see no other way. It's Rasta we find the roots in it. How do you handle fame? I handle fame by not being famous. Come on, you know you're a famous man. No, I mean, you know, not to me. No? No famous to me. <laughs> Some people get drunk off of fame. See, I learned, I learned from, from <coughs> he was coming in, from I just started music. You know, the people them warned me. Them show me say, hey, this game is a game where if you don't mind sharp, you lose your consciousness. So the only way you can lose your consciousness is because if you figure say you're, you're getting, some people say, hey, you might, your head might get swell. Right. And if your head swell, that's it. So, you know, we really don't keep my head in a bandage that it can't swell. <laughs> <laughs> True. How do you handle the women that come at you in droves? I, people have visions of women beating down the door to get at Bob Jeez. Marley and <laughs> grabbing clothes. <laughs> Is it like that? No. No? No. I'm uneasy, you know. <laughs> Is it difficult, though, to keep your balance and not, you know, get to feeling that you're more important than you really are when so many people are after you all the time for different things? No, you see, I don't think, I, I never really check myself, you know, I really, I know I am benefit to the people, you know, that's the only consciousness I have on myself, that I can be beneficial to a people, you know, and when I really, you don't know anything else, I don't know that. What do you think it is that has made Bob Marley such a big name? I think, you know, maybe it's just what Bob Marley stands for. What is that? The truth and the determination to stay alive and survive, you know. You have a record out called Survival. Yeah, that was last year. Yeah. Was anything, did anything happen to you that caused you to write that? Well, 1976, I'm shoot off of me, right? Yes. And I figured that was survival, you know. Yeah. What happened when you were shot? You were in your home. Yeah. Was it in the morning or at night or what happened? Well, it was about, um, well, that's about 9 o'clock in the night. Yeah. What happened is that um, the night before, about three nights before that, I, I was living at a place called Bullby, you know? Mm. And I went home about 3 o'clock in the morning and get, a, and get some sleep. And then I vision I was in a lot of gunshot, you know? That was, that was a, a dream. I was in a, a, a barrage, a gunshot, and, but when, when, when it all over, you know, it's like I never really get a shot. But I see my mother get shot, you know, the vision show my mother get shot in her head. And what happened is that the vision said, don't run, you know, it's like, do you know that this gunshot is like something that the vision said, don't run, stand up. So when the gunshot started firing a hope road, the first thing come back to my mind was the vision. And all I could remember is that the vision said, don't run. And so me have to stand up, you know. And, you know, them fire fire until it was a tired of fire. And then two is, is, is not really a laughable gun battle. Man starts to run and it ease up, you know. And that Where was, were you hit? Eh? Where were you hit? Me? Yes, sir. Yeah. Went right through? Or just No, I said large inside there. Yeah? Yeah. You never saw the gunman? Well, at that time, no. But you know who did it? Yeah, I know that. Were they caught? No, but I don't quote the police. Mm. It's just, you know, what I'm saying. You have a record company now. Yeah. Why? Oh, 
know, you know, a long time we always have a record company. What we have now is a recording studio. When we go into the studio to work, it was a lot of hassle. I mean, we are rust. You know, some people don't want to rust in them studio. No, if you stop all of this, you have to make one. Because, you know what I mean, a man might say, don't you say, I'll sell us your God. Well, you know what I mean, go and build your own studio. You know what I mean? So, all right, I'll sell us his God, and we'll go and build a studio, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know what I mean, I just said, go. Just, is it them things come through sabotage and through pressure. If everything was nice, maybe we wouldn't have to build a studio. But, you know, it, it's just a tricky place. It's not everyone really have that humanitarian feeling. Some people just are deal with them don't even know what I'm dealing with. Mm. What's ahead for Bob Marley, do you know? Do you have an agenda or a master plan? Well, I feel ahead for I and I is the unity of Africa. And then when the unity of Africa come, then people will really understand, say, you know, there was something in this thing. I uh, there is something in it. Do you think of yourself more as an African than a Jamaican? Yeah, because one of the main things is that we are Rasta. From you accept Rasta, you become a Ethiopian, which is Africa. Next thing again, the history of Jamaica shows that the Arawak Indian was living there and it belonged to the Arawak Indian. Now our history shows that through slave business black people come out of the west and thing, you know? So we still figure, say, Africa is a route, you know? And this is where we must return to. What do you see as most of uh, Africa's problems as far as uniting, I mean? I see Africa problem is that outside people keep on fatiguing the people, you know? I make them can't really get them things together, you know? If it's not this superpower, it's that superpower. But Africa is only a place which part of music exploit, you know. Nobody not really. Africa Africa's so rich that it, it become a man just going to Africa, steal out of him and steal and carry back in a film country. And Africa stayed alike, you know. But Africa ready. Af uh, Garvey used to say Africa for the Africans. Is that how you feel? Yeah, Africa for Africans, a woman abroad, you know. True. <laughs> Will your will your home base though always be Jamaica or someday do you would, no, would you like to live in Africa? No, someday going to be in Africa. Yeah. Maybe we open a Jerusalem. You know what I mean? Let them Bible land. And what do you think lies ahead for Jamaica? I think what lies ahead for Jamaica is that Jamaica is a beautiful island. The best thing Jamaica could have been is just like how Jamaica, like how England owned Jamaica. Jamaica must make some part of Africa own Jamaica. You know what I mean? And it work more nicer, I mean, you know. But if, if it's going to be a thing which by we always have a going have a war. Because the only solution is either them get themselves with Nigeria or with someone, you know what I mean? But make Jamaica become some African something to do with Africa, that's Africa who in Jamaica, you know. But because of people and them Wolipa a uh, 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 ideology and philosophy where them want to come with, you know. Some people want to be Marxist, some want to be this, some want to be that. And nobody would want, and plenty of people don't want to be with them is. And where them is is Africa and, and Africa have its own culture and its own people and you know. All it needs is people who keep it down for either die out of the earth or something. What is your uh, feeling about the condition of black people here in the United States? I feel like black people should develop themselves, you know, not, in a, not, not to several then just developing up yourself having a prejudice thing to it. It's just that we are people with our own history and culture. We can educate ourselves. I mean, we are the first creators, so we have to really, everything we see on this earth here, yeah, the black man make it. And, I, and I'm saying that the white man don't make some, but all wisdom come from the black man. You know, a lot of young viewers look up to you and are going to want to hang on every word and every syllable. Do you have a message for young people? Well, you know, the whole thing again is to really check out the truth of Rasta and don't make, like, fallism. Don't make it check it out. And don't get too busy that you can't check out the truth. Because the truth is there. And Africa awaits its creators. And we know that the people in the West, headwise, it's them ready, you know. It's them have to learn, come learn. What I'm learning in the West, them have to carry it home to them people, make it be a benefit to the people. Because, I mean, how long must the black people suffer? And these are people, 
you know? And then we have our own culture. We have everything. We don't shout at anything. We have everything. Plus, we have a land that no one is living there. And we must go home to it. And when you go home, you can build all of these big buildings if you want. I mean, if you miss a city, build a city. You know what I mean? If you want a car, you can get a car. I mean, I don't see, I don't see, I don't see the big thing. One time America was, was, you know what I mean, maybe used to have lots of all, 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 what I call it, all sort of thing I walk through. Africa is a peaceful place. Then we want to fool black people, boys, a jungle and blah, blah, mm -hmm. boom, boom. Where have you been in Africa besides Ethiopia? Zimbabwe. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Gabon. How did Zimbabwe strike you? Well, you know, Zimbabwe nice, man. Zimbabwe really nice. I mean, you know, it's like a paradise in a, in a, in a, in a, in a place. You know, when you go in and see it. Beautiful. How did the people react to you? People is great. Yeah, people good. You know, them places when you go and you see how the people and how the land set up. You see people living. You see a man having most on a nice pizza. And then the whole thing about it, the climate, you can go out all the while. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? The climate nice outside. If you want to look upon a few lions and things, you can walk and go. And if you want to see some things that man never make, but it look like somebody make it. That's all Zimbabwe too. Because I go in a place and I see some stone farm. But I know it's not the man make it. But the weed farm, you know, is, is higher, than, higher than something. It's really been a pleasant and informative experience talking to you, Brother Molly. Nice. I thank you for your time. I agree. Wish you well. Pastor.